there is a process called freeze drying. Basically what it does, it removes the water from any liquid, for example, breast milk, turning your breast milk into breast milk powder, literally turning your liquid gold into powdered gold. It is a process that already existed and is commonly used in milk banks, but now it is also accessible for us. Having your breast milk in a powder form without losing any of the nutritional values is easily a dream come true for many mothers. But it must be said that with its current technological stage, it does come with a price tag. And the price tag is more similar to that of a Michelin star delicacy than a burger at the local franchise. However, with the advancement of technology, this could be one of those things that become more and more affordable in the future. My guest today is Kim Kish. Uh, she is the founder of the company called Made by Mom. They specialize in freeze drying breast milk and they seem to become more and more popular as mothers experience the obvious benefits of having their breast milk in a powder form. Make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications and keep your ears open for our upcoming fundraiser for the breast pump that mimics suckling. And now, enjoy the talk. All right, I'm here today with Kim Kish. Kim, thank you for joining me. Uh, thanks, Eva. It's a pleasure to be here. So the service uh, you offer is to freeze dry uh, breast milk, which means that you turn it into a powder that moms can then easily turn back into breast milk again by adding warm, purified water. So it's a powder, so moms can easily carry it anywhere and they can use it in other ways too, like fortifying their baby's meals, which is fantastic. Um. Uh, if I understand correctly, this freeze drying process preserves all the nutritional values and there is no additives added during the process. So essentially it is almost equivalent to the milk it was before. So could you walk us through, do some of the components, especially bioactive components, get lost in the process? Uh, this is probably the most asked question that we get as it's you know super concerning for a mom to make sure that their child is getting the nutrients they need. So what happens in the freeze drying process is the water of the breast milk is being removed and the nutrients, generally speaking, are kept in, in the same constitution that they were in. So you take the frozen breast milk and you put it into a vacuum chamber, which removes the moisture. And then like you had mentioned, it leaves it as a powder. So one of the recent studies, because we've looked at, we've researched this through and through, and one of the recent studies that talked about the bioactive ingredients in breast milk basically tells us that the majority of the, the majority of the nutrients remain intact. Now, proteins, glucose, triglycerides, and I think it's polyphenols are untouched. So compared to so as well as the fat content is untouched. So if you're looking at freezing versus freeze drying, the breast milk in a freezer begins to decompose its proteins and its fat almost immediately. After two weeks, it starts diminishing quite a bit. Whereas in freeze drying, the fat and protein remain the same. Now, if you're talking about the um, bioactive ingredients, so one of them would be um, the probiotic and prebiotic bacteria found in breast milk. They're not touched as well. When you test the um, freeze-dried breast milk, there's tons of bacterial sides in there um, that remain. Um, li lysosome, lysozyme, sorry. Um, is another component that um, attacks bad bacteria. That is undisturbed as well. Um, the only one that we did find is vitamin C. Vitamin C found in breast milk does decrease, and I believe it's 11%. However, the test was also a little bit um, inconclusive because they didn't compare it back to the natural breast milk. They compared it to the frozen breast milk. Right. So if you were to have a freezer full of breast milk, that's already, you know, the fat has already started decomposing as well as the proteins. 
and then ship it to us, you're kind of getting a snapshot of where it is at that point. It's not going to constitute right back into, unfortunately, its original shape. So the sooner you get it freeze dried, the better. Mm -hmm. You can even freeze dry uh, freshly expressed milk or it does have to go into the freezer just because of the shipping circumstances. Um, so if if you lived in our if you lived with us, for example, and you had freshly expressed milk, it still needs to be frozen. However, it would be only frozen for, you know, hours as opposed to days or weeks. But yes, the breast milk needs to be shipped frozen. Otherwise, it's going to spoil like, you know, you know, breast milk. I think it can sit on a counter for what, 24 hours and then it's. Yeah, and especially if you if you want to keep it like fridge temperature. You might extend it a little bit, a few hours, but um, you would still have to live close for that to happen. Absolutely. And and we, we understand that it's not feasible for every parent to be um, shipping their breast milk even once a month. I mean, some people, they can do that, but it's more of a storage that you're going to have. And, and like you were mentioning, you can fortify it with food. So it's not going to be, I mean... I think it's the CDC suggests not to only feed your child breast milk that has been frozen for a long amount of time mm -hmm. because the nutrients have. So it's more of a fortification as opposed to it's only exclusive diet yeah, or exclusive feeding. Yes. Um, you mentioned about vitamin C. I just want to pop back to that uh, point. Um, Absolutely. That 11%, what do you mean it loses 11% or it stay, remains only 11%? Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you for clarifying. It loses 11%. Uh -huh. of us. Now that was just in this one test. And to be really honest, the amount of tests that... A lot of the testing was surrounding by breast milk banks, because this is kind of where it first came. How do we preserve the milk in the breast milk banks? Um, so that's kind of where they came from. And a lot of times in breast milk banks, the milk is also heavily pasteurized. Yes. Right. So a lot of the testing comes from that. And then, like I had mentioned in the vitamin C issue, they were not comparing it to freshly expressed milk. So where that 11% was lost is really inconclusive. Mm -hmm. yeah, but the other components, as far as I know, what they have stated is there is very little loss in any of them. That is so fantastic. That is fantastic. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, so this powder keeps for about three years, which is a phenomenal length of time to be able to keep this powdered gold for so long <laughs> um, now what happens with the quality does the quality of the powder gradually degrade during these three years or it keeps um approximately the same throughout this time great question so basically the nutrients from the breast milk begin deteriorating due to storage having the proper storage is absolutely key any oxygen water or light are those are the components that are going to influence the integrity of the breast milk. So how people who freeze dry anything store them are usually in glass because the transfer rate, which is the rate in which, you know, oxygen, moisture, or light can get through glass um, is very, very small. So it can last for 25 years is what we say. So we're not shipping anything in glass <laughs> or storing it. So the next best is Mylar bags. Um, so we have researched them extensively as well to find some mylar bags that have no, no traces of any BPAs or other toxins that can um, come into contact with the breast milk. Um, the company that we have partnered with that provide us with the mylar bags, they're the ones who have, can guarantee that the transfer rate is zero for up to three years. So if our breast milk is stored properly, mm -hmm. it's airtight, and we do remove the air, the majority of the air from the bags when packing. The bags are kept in a cool area. They're not in sunlight. They can last longer. We also include um, oxygen um, absorbers in each of the packages to help um, prevent any oxygen with getting into them. But essentially, 
anything freeze dried, they say can last up to 25 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. However, like I said, it's the transfer rate of the packaging. We were really hoping on getting biodegradable packaging as, you know, keeping green is super important, but unfortunately the transfer rate on those bags are so high that the quality of the milk um, would not be, would not. Would suffer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then once the bag is opened, because if you say it's an airtight, once it's open, then how many days, how, what is the time frame that you would have to use the powder? We're saying three days. So the three days, yeah, three days. So the bags are packaged in 15 gram um, little bags. And basically, depending on how much water was in your breast milk uh, to begin with, that would equal, I would say, four to five ounces of reconstituted breast milk. So usually a spring mm -hmm. or so, if not pop it in the fridge for a little bit. So mm -hmm. the bags are one time use or two time uses and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And that kind of correlates with the, the amount or the volume of the frozen milk that you initially uh, used. So you can pretty much make the same amount of milk out of the powder and as you've sent in so to be frozen. What we do freeze -dried. is when you send us your milk, we weigh it all and then we freeze dry it and we weigh it again to find out how much water was removed. And then when we put it into the packages, you have your own ratio of reconstitution that is required. And we put that on the back of the bag. So you know exactly how much water to add to each of the bags to get your exact amount of breast milk back. That is very good. That's very considerate and scientific. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so let's talk through the process a little bit. So there are three easy steps. Mom sends in her frozen milk, you freeze dry it and then return the powder. Can you walk us through a little bit uh, on this one, especially the first part? I suppose that's more challenging, the uh, sending in the milk. Shipping the milk. Yeah, that is definitely the trickiest part of it. So what happens is when you have decided to go with Made by Mom to have your breast milk freeze dried, um, you contact us and we're going to send you back um, an intake form. Basically, the intake form includes where you live, what the shipping is going to, you know, what we are required to find out for the, your shipping needs. Um, how much milk you have, all of those things. Once we have the intake form, we go and we figure out the shipping logistics ourselves. So if you're down the street, we might use a local courier as opposed to FedEx or UPS, which we have partnered with to ensure that we can have quick service as well as ensure that it's frozen. Um, so once we have all the logistics figured out, what we do is we schedule a time for your milk to be processed and we will let you know. We don't want people just randomly shipping us milk because we might not have the storage space. And we do um, try to limit the amount of different mother's milk that is in the facility at one time to ensure that your milk is completely yours, not mixed up with anybody else's. So when that time is scheduled, it is your slot your saving space in your freezer or our freezer for your stuff. Um, so we can either ship um, specialized coolers to you. You can use your own cooler. Of course, if you're lucky enough, we can just pick it up for you if you're if you're local. And then after that, we will tell you when to ship it. You ship us your breast milk. And then once we receive it, we put it in our freezers until it's ready to be processed. So after a batch before you is done, everything is sterilized, clean, then we can start the process. Now, once the milk goes into the machines, you're looking at anywhere from 30 to 48 hours of processing. It all depends on how the milk was, um, was stored in the freezer. If it was laying flat, then it's super easy and quick to get the moisture out. But if it's very a big, dense block, it takes a lot, lot longer. And once that's done, we immediately package it as quickly as possible into the Mylar bags with your oxygen absorber and ship it right back to you. So the whole press process, you're looking anywhere from a week to two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's not a, even a long time. No. And uh, I suppose this this one week, two week is true for anywhere in Canada. Sorry, I should have probably clarified. Once we get your milk, you're looking at about 
one to two weeks of you receiving it. Um, internationally, you're looking at two days of shipping. Mm -hmm. Add another day or two to that process. Okay, that's not even a big difference. Which other countries you provide this service outside of Canada? Anyone can ship us their breast milk. We're super happy to work with them. UPS, FedEx have been fantastic um, in ensuring that it is done quickly and properly so the breast milk isn't thawed at all. That is fantastic. Okay, uh, let's look at the pricing. Uh, you have a scaled pricing structure, which means that the higher the volume of the milk, the lower the price gets. Uh, and could you walk us through maybe an example? Let's say a mom who has 10 pounds of frozen milk, how much would that cost to get freeze-dried? Okay, so 10 pounds. So we deal with ounces. So I I believe 10 pounds equals 160 ounces in breast milk. So if you look at our chart, it says it's $2.30 per ounce. So I believe the total is around $360, $370. Now that fee does not include the shipping. Mm -hmm. It does include the packaging and the processing, um, but the shipping is an additional rate due to the, the variance of cost depending on where you're located. Mm -hmm. Do you have a range maybe for within Canada and the US? What would that figure be approximately? So for 10 pounds, so I believe 10 pounds can fit into one of so we have specialized coolers that require no ice or dry ice that you we can ship to you of course that's going to add the shipping mm -hmm. um or you can use styrofoam with dry ice which will last up to about three days and usually we aim for overnight shipping so you're looking at anywhere depending on where you where you live in canada 75 to about 150 dollars for the shipping for the shipping okay okay yeah and then internationally it all depends on weight mm -hmm. of course and then the size all of that also we do not ship anything on like a thursday or friday so we avoid any issues that can happen over the weekend right, right. yeah because you don't want especially with the frozen milk to be stuck anywhere absolutely not and then uh, say this 10 pounds of milk would make how many cups or how many grams of powder? Um, funny that you asked this. We just had somebody who came in with 170 ounces. So 160, 170, we're, we're, we're pretty close. So I'm going to go with her numbers. Um, so breast milk is usually approximately 90% water. So when we're taking out the water, you're looking at being left with 10%. So if you had 10 pounds, you'd be left with one pound of powdered breast milk. So, I mean, it's it's just mind blowing to think that you're traveling and you don't have to bring 10 pounds of breast milk and then you're not packing a cooler or ice, which adds more. You're just bringing one pound that is the equivalent. Anyways, I, I just find this so fascinating. Um, but I did measure her breast milk and we're looking at about seven cups of powder which would equal 46 individualized bags. Because you use that 25 milligram bags. 15, yes. Oh, 15, yes. 15. Yeah. So then, yeah. And I believe her breast milk was came in 43 breast milk bags. Each bag, you know, you're putting in different amounts. So it's pretty equivalent to bag per bag. That's very good. Yeah. And um, to put mom's mind at ease, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the safety guidelines uh, you follow and you have in place for handling the milk and the powder? You touched on it already. So if you could just a little bit talk about that. Absolutely. So the governing body um, for food safety regulations is called Alberta Health Services here in Alberta. Um, they need to come to our facility and check to make sure everything is at standard or above standard. And we have been given the gold seal by them. So we've covered, we're covered there. Um, upon receiving anybody's breast milk, we do a quality control check immediately. Basically we open it up and we take a temperature of every single bag to ensure that it has stayed frozen through the entire process. It is so important that the breast milk is frozen when we receive it. We don't want any of the integrity to be, and we know how hard moms work. 
to yeah. breast milk. So yeah, um, we check the bags to make sure they're done. Um, like I had mentioned, your breast milk is then put into a container, into a freezer, and it is not processed until the mums before you milk is completely done. That means package sealed back in a box, everything is sterilized, then your milk comes out and your milk is the only milk being processed at a time. As well, like I had also mentioned, we do staggered shipping to ensure we're not having a plethora of milk come in at once and gets confusing. Yeah, yeah, it just eliminate any chance for cross-contamination. Absolutely. And when did you start the company? How long have you been in pr providing this service? So we started the company um, back in 2022, so last year. So it's a, just a new, fresh startup, which seems to be going pretty well so far. Very good. Is it picking up? It is. Um, I think our biggest hurdle is the education aspect of that. So it's so important for, for us to get the word out. I don't think a lot of moms are even aware that this is an option for them because this technology is, I guess, relatively new. Um, so podcasts like this are super beneficial. So we appreciate you having us on. Not at all. It's an absolute pleasure. I didn't know about this either. And I, I like to think I knew, I know a lot about breastfeeding and what is available, what technologies are available. So I was absolutely stunned that I never heard of this before. And, and that's just, I think that's the hardest part is being able to penetrate into, you know, the little niche and make sure that this information is, you know, God, given to the mom. So they, they are aware that Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, do you plan to expand um, the facilities that you use for this? Do you feel that it, this is something that's going to pick up and you will need more locations? I think so. Um, the feedback with anyone who has heard of it is astounding. People are blown away, super happy with the product. It's so great to see the moms get their breast milk and the little packages. They get so excited. And then, you know, we get calls and um, we have a mom who's had her breast milk for over a year. Um, her kid is almost three. Um, she's expecting again. And she's like, well, if I can't breastfeed the other one, at least I have like, it, it, yeah, it's just endless options with it, which is, yeah, it, the feedback has been great. There's also been um, some other companies popping up, some other startups coming. Um, there's a few in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Um there's two in Asia, one in New Zealand that is trying to start up. I know they're they're having some problems with logistics and what have you, but I haven't heard any in Europe yet. Not sure what's going on over there. Well, maybe you can expand over here. Maybe <laughs> we would like to expand primarily in you know some metropolitan areas to decrease the shipping being aspect of it. So yeah, our, our hope is eventually to get into the big ones in Canada first and then we'll see how it goes uh -huh, how it goes from there yeah okay well it's all fantastic and I really hope that you will have a chance to increase and expand and become available for more and more moms uh, thank you Eva we appreciate that <laughs> thank you for your time Kim uh no thank you for having us mm -hmm.